Good morning, brothers and sisters. It is good to be back with you. I was away in Bosnia, Herzegovina, in a very special place called Medjugorje, which means between the hills. There's two great mountains there, two hills. Apparition Hill, where the Blessed Virgin Mary first appeared to six children, and Mount Krushevac, upon which there is a cross erected in 1934 to commemorate the 1900-year anniversary of Christianity in that land of Croatians who have lived and dwelt in that land, faithful to our Lord, a very tough people, and a people that have been very graced by 43 years of apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary appearing under the title of Our Lady Queen of Peace. And brothers and sisters, I don't think I need to tell you how desperate and dire we are for peace in our world today. Everywhere we look, we see conflict. Everywhere we look, we see warring. Everywhere we look, we see ideologies that are set up against the image and likeness of God that is in you. Do you know that you have the image and likeness of God in you? Today we hear in the gospel, this powerful gospel, we're celebrating the central core tenet of our faith today. That God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A communion of three persons that is love. The Father pouring himself out, infinitely giving himself to the Son. The Son receiving all that the Father is infinitely, pouring himself back into the Father in this bond of love that is the Trinity. There were foreshadowings of this and even made more explicit even in the Old Testament in the Revelations, in the Pentateuch, in that first book of Genesis. We hear, let us make man in our image. An indication, an intimation that God is not just singular, but plural. Plural, yet one. Three persons, infinite, in love, in majesty, in goodness, yet one in nature. One complete nature. We would not know who God is in the face of God if it were for not for the second person of the Trinity who took on our nature and became flesh, incarnated amongst us in the womb of the Blessed Virgin, taking on our human nature and uniting it with his divinity. Praise and glory be to God forever. He perfects our nature and then offers it to the Father in his sacrifice upon the cross, and in the resurrection is triumphant over death, our arch enemy of death. Brothers and sisters, are we all going to die? Yeah, most likely, right? (laughs) Most likely. Maybe we will see the second coming, but odds are if we're gambling people, which we really aren't, Odds are we're all going to die. The question is, what will you live for? Will you live unto God and for God, or will you live for the world? We just heard last week in the readings of St. James in the weekly readings that if we live for the world and we make ourselves one with the world and the things that the world has to offer, we are at enmity with God. I don't know about you, but I prefer to be at enmity with the world. We're called to live in the world, but not be of the world. We hear in the gospel today, this powerful gospel, Jesus sends his disciples to a mountain that he had designated. The 11 of them, one had betrayed Jesus, Judas had betrayed him. And when they were there, they approached him, they saw him, they worshiped, and Jesus says, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. He all, that word power could also be translated, as it is in the RSV Catholic edition, as all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All authority. What did Jesus do with his authority? 
He gave it to the apostles. The foundation stones of the church. He gave his authority and entrusted his authority to the apostles. He gave them authority to do what he commissioned them to do and to do the works that he did. And he says, go, therefore, you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, thus revealing again who God is truly, a trinity of persons. God in his essence, God in his being, God is being, infinite being. And we can know that even philosophical. That God is, philosophically, we can know that God is being. When I was at Franciscan University studying philosophy, we studied in a metaphys metaphysics class. Metaphysics meaning beyond physics, above physics, going beyond what is natural, the natural realm. We studied a book called um, On Being by Father Norris Clark. And in that book, Father Norris Clark points out that God is essay, being. God is being itself. He always has been. There's no time with God. There's no space. He's before time. He's outside of time. Before anything ever was, he, he said it himself in Revelation to Moses. What did he say from the burning bush, which we heard about the fire today? Before anything was, he says, who, am, who are you? God says, I am. He just is. God just is always, he always is. Father Norris Clark says, we can say of God that he is, ising. He just is always ising, infinitely ising. It's not really in our vocabulary, right? You could just, it's Memorial Day weekend, you can just go around saying, God just is ising. He always is. He always was and he always will be. That's his nature. That's who God is in his being. But in his essence, he is what? St. John tells us in the first letter, God is... One, two, three, brothers and sisters. God is... Ising that is love. <laughs> he is love. We know that from the revelation of Jesus Christ, he reveals himself as love and proof of that is he pours himself out and lays down his life for his friends, you and me. So that you and I can truly become the sons and daughters of God as we hear in our second reading of St. Paul to the Romans today. Are we living according to spirit the Spirit of God, brothers and sisters, or are we living according to the flesh? Are we at enmity with the world? Are we at enmity with God? If you have the Spirit of Jesus Christ living in you as temples and sons and daughters of the Father, you have the Spirit of God living in you. And you are free, and you can call out, Abba, Papa. And he responds, you know his voice and he knows your voice. You have his identity. When you were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you received a new identity. You are sons and daughters of God. Is there any other plan in any other faith, any other religion, any other philosophy by which God himself makes him one with you so that you can be divinized, so that you really, truly have his identity and the stamp of his nature upon you and you are a partaker of divine nature. Controversial to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Buddhism doesn't have that belief. Buddhism doesn't offer that to us. Confucianism doesn't offer that to us. Islam does not offer that to us. The Greek philosophers do not offer that to us. The Hindu gods do not offer that to us. Only do we receive that from Jesus Christ and the revelation of Jesus Christ who reveals the face of the Father to us who is love. 
and we have his being in us, his nature, and we cry out, Abba, Father. So, brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Fear. Brothers and sisters, I'm not sure if you're aware of all the tyranny, global tyranny that's in our world right now. There is global tyranny. And we can live in fear, but we were not made for fear. We were made and created to be free, sons and daughters of God. The apostles knew this. The saints knew this. How many of the apostles were martyred? The original 12 apostles. How many of them had blood martyrdom, died for the truth and love for Jesus Christ? How many? Who said it? Ten. Absolutely right, brother. One betrayed him, Judas. The other, St. John, the beloved apostle, died a white martyr's death. He was persecuted and exiled, and they tried to boil him too. Saints know this, and they're willing to live and die for the truth because they know the truth is worth it, that this life goes by like this. We can point to saints in our modern day times that knew this reality, that did not succumb and bend the knee to tyranny of the world and to the evil one and those powers of darkness, that insisted on living in light. Brothers and sisters, right now, today, with us, in this very congregation, in this church, we have a daughter of a saint who did not bow her knee to the tyranny of lies and deceptions and the ways of the world. Saint Gianna, her daughter, Dr. Gianna, is with us in this celebration of the Holy Mass today. Saint Gianna, the doctors told her, you should abort your, your child because you're going to have complications and you're going to die if you don't get an abortion. And she stood fast, fast and strong against the tyranny of the day, the culture of death, the tyranny of death and world powers and rulers because she knew what really mattered. True love. Our God who is infinite and eternal of whom we are destined to spend the rest of eternity with. She knew not to live for the here and now, but to live for the ever, and she offered her life and bore a beautiful daughter. Testimony to life, testimony to goodness, testimony to sanctity. Brothers and sisters, are you willing to to die for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to live and die for the gospel? Are you willing to die for love and truth and beauty so that you might have life and have it to the full? If we compromise ourselves with the world and make ourselves one with the world, how can we expect to truly be fulfilled and truly be happy? But when we give ourselves to our beloved Lord, our blessed Lord, we become one with him. And we hear that spirit, his spirit that is speaking to us. And we truly have the spirit of sonship because it's Christ's sonship that is living in us. And we can cry out, Abba, Papa, Father, Daddy, I believe in you. I trust in you. I know that you have me. I trust in your providence. And it is the spirit himself who is bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. That's your destiny, brothers and sisters. The pains of the current present day are nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in the sons and daughters of God. And all of creation is groaning forth for your full revelation. And it shall come. It shall come. Because he is true to his word. He is true to who he is. And he's, he's worth giving everything for, brothers and sisters. Worth giving everything for even our very own lives. We glorify the Holy Trinity on this day, Trinity Sunday, 
as we pray, all glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.